Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Mike, and today I'm looking at a prototype for Rome, Fate of an Empire. This is the newest solo game coming from Gabe Barrett's Solo Game of the Month series. And as always, no disclaimer, we get no compensation for our coverage. We just want to help you make an informed decision. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. We have over 60 of them now, bonus playthroughs, top 10 lists, those kind of things. You can also listen to our weekly podcast for reviews and design discussions. Or come and say hi and join the conversation on our Discord. So the designer of Rome, Fate of an Empire, has described it as kind of an engine builder in the vein of Res Arcana mixed with Mage Knight. And the Mage Knight thing is 100% accurate, as you will see. This is very heavily influenced by the Mage Knight card play system, which I think is great. But you start out in a little fledgling capital here. You have this 5x5 five five grid of cards. Your capital is always in the middle. The rest of these are randomized. And you'll be moving around and building developments on to these regions, building them out from your capital. They have to go orthogonally away. Those will be earning you upgrades and earning you glory points and also giving you access to actions. And this is kind of where the tableau building, ability building thing comes in. And you'll be performing that movement and getting the resources you need to build developments and do other things with these action cards. You have a generally generic deck with a couple cards replaced and removed based on your character. Again, very Mage Knight-ish. And you'll be able to buy advanced action cards to upgrade your deck, but you're using the same resource you are uh, using to buy the developments to uh, change the map. You can also battle with enemies that are on some of the tiles to unlock them for using their abilities. And the game takes place over three or four rounds with a bunch of little mini turns within those rounds. Think Days and Nights in Mage Knight if you've seen that. And to win, you have to complete some edicts based on your difficulty level. I'm playing the normal difficulty for the short scenario, which means I have to complete two basic edicts, or partial edicts I think they're called, which is the easier side of each of these. You'll see like here I need nine glory points or 16 for the full edict. So with the partial there, be nine and eight. So in this mode, I would have to get this many glory points, the sum of these two cards. And I would also need to complete whatever their requirements are. And there are a ton of these. So the game and its goals change pretty drastically each time. So let's jump in and see how the game works. And then I'll give you some thoughts on the play at the end of the video. Okay, so first picking my edicts, I get three. Are these all? Yeah, they're all on the partial side. I get one more than I need to choose, and then I can get rid of one of them. So let's see. I've got Trahan's Market. Have a maximum of three. Those are Strife cards in your deck at game end. My character actually is more about loans. There are two negative cards that get added to your deck akin to Wounds in Mage Knight. And yeah, she doesn't tend to get a lot of Strife, so that one shouldn't be too hard. But then she would also need to build the Market which means she would need to spend three and then four and then six food. These are some of the resources you can earn at some point in the game. And 12 points is by far the highest of these three. So I guess they know that it's easy to uh, not get too many strife. How about debt crisis? Start with two extra loans in your deck and two extra money. And then uh, now gold <laughs> is the most valuable resource in the game. That's what you use to buy new action cards and buy the developments for you to build. But my character is especially good when you see her, you'll see this, at getting rid of loan cards. So that one I'm definitely leaning toward. And then the Roman Wall, develop all territories along the southern border. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five. And things have to go orthogonally. So that would mean at a bare minimum, I would need to build here and then in these five places. There's only six territories, so that's not that tough. And then also spend two, and then three, and then six. That's a big jump. <laughs> Iron, and ten glory points. Now, building that many developments is going to tend to give me a lot of glory points anyway. Hmm. All right, for now, I I'm expecting to lose this, by the way. I'm not very good at the game. <laughs> for now, I'm going to do the debt crisis and Trahan's market, the lowest and the highest uh, glory point value. So I need to get 20 glory points in total have three or fewer strife in my deck. I'm not worried about that at all. So it's really just getting the glory points and these resources, and theoretically, I'm good to go with that. Now, here's my character, Livia. In the set I got, they have three double-sided boards. So that's, what is that, uh, six characters total? And to talk through a few things, here are the resources that carry on from turn to turn. You'll also get, like, sort of temporary uh, resources that you spend for things from your cards, kind of akin to, again, like attack and defense and stuff from other deck builders. So you have gold, which is the most important resource. It's kind of a wild to activate the boosted effect of cards. Every card has a weaker and stronger effect on it. So gold lets you do that. 
And also gold is what you use, again, to buy advanced actions and developments. So you always need gold. And uh, then you've got, uh, what, steel, iron, or ore, I don't know, food, water. I'm sure they have more uh, thematic names for these. And additionally, you've got your technology tracks. As you build developments, you'll get bonuses to these. And they each let you do different things. Population doesn't do anything on its own, but some other cards will relate to population. Industry controls how far you can move with each card because any card can be used for movement. Military controls how many cards you draw each turn so you can get bigger turns and bigger combos going. Technology controls how many of these influence tokens you get. You'll place these down on the developments you've built around the board and then activate them to get resources or activate different powers. So it's really good to have a lot of those. And then culture gives you more of these trade tokens, which will go on certain non-developed territories that don't have anything there yet and let you get generally resources and such. And Livia starts with two of the trade tokens and three of the influence tokens. Every character gets four of these movement tokens, which just means you can use four cards to move per turn. And finally, last thing to show you before we jump in is the kind of like main offer. So first over here, they reverse the words here, but this is the round tracker. In the quick game I'm playing, I only get three rounds. And again, that's if you've seen Mage Knight kind of like days and nights. So it's multiple turns of playing cards comprise one round. And then this is the turn tracker. You start on the star, and the second that it advances to the number of your current round, the round ends. Or if I go through my deck really quickly, that can end the round early. So I'll have, what, three, four, five turns in round one, and then that thing advances. And then around two, I'll have six, and then around three, I'll have seven. And then over here is the glory point tracker. Remember, I have to get to 20 of that with the two cards I chose. And then finally, you've got the offer for developments down here. And for advanced actions here, if you buy an advanced action, it goes right to the top of your deck. So you will draw it momentarily. And those cost from one to three gold and developments cost from two to four gold. When you get those, it's a little different. They can go in your discard, they can go in your hand or they can go in your development area. But if they're in your development area at the beginning of every turn, you have to pay a one gold tax to keep them there. And the cost up here, which goes with the, uh, the resources your cards can generate, not those like ongoing resources. This is how much you need to pay to actually build it into your empire. This is the upgrade you get for your like little technology tracks. This is a resource it can produce using those uh, influence tokens I showed. And then they also have different powers and things. That's how much glory points it's worth when you build it. And you draw back into a new hand, usually a five cards to start every time you end the turn. And then this tracker advances. And also these don't get refilled until the end of the turn. They all slide to the right and you refill from the applicable decks. And additionally, you can pay one of your resources, uh, industry here, to cycle cards and put them on the bottom of the deck if you want to get something else to see. All right, that's enough uh, preamble. Let's get in with our first hand of five and see how we do. So to show you some things on the cards, this icon in the upper left shows that this is a card specifically for Livia. Only she has this. And these X icons you'll see in the upper right means that the character with that icon would not use these cards. So every character has two cards they don't use and two cards they add. And then every card has a color up here with its name. That's going to correspond to one of the uh, four resources here. And that also means which resource you need to spend, or you can always use gold as a wild for this, to boost the card and use the more powerful effect down here. So for copper mines, to get the more powerful effect, I could either spend one, whatever that is, ingot, or one gold is always a wild for this effect. Gold's not wild for everything, by the way, just for uh, boosting cards. And most of these are, again, going to give us resources that we can use to develop things or do other actions. So here we got three military from Show of Force. We've got three industry from Copper Mines. We've got uh, two culture from Physician. And there we go. Then we've got two technology from Onager. So we've got a little bit of everything. And each of these has an effect besides paying for costs that they can be used for. The technology one, the one with the, what is that, a sextant <laughs> a compass? I don't know. Uh, that one is what you use to develop trade routes with people. You have to be actually on the space to do that. And you can either pay a lower cost to get an immediate benefit or a higher cost to get a benefit that goes on for the entire round. Military, the helmet can be used when you're in a space with one of these enemies. You don't flip them until you move adjacent to them to uh, fight them and defeat them. That'll both clear up the space for using its power or building there, but it also will get you off in uh, gold and glory points. Culture, I don't think does anything super frequently. I don't remember it having like an ongoing thing, but it is what uh, you use to get rid of strife cards that are in your hand. You can return them back to the pile. Otherwise, they kind of just take up space in your hand and give you negative points at the end of the game. And then you already saw Industry, the Scales of Justice. That's the one that lets you cycle cards from the offer and get new options. And any card member can be used for movement. My character's current movement is two. Now, the only location I have or development at the start is the capital. And this little star symbol means that it is a spend ability. 
at any time of your turn when you're on a development, you can put one of your influence, one of my three influence tokens on it, but you don't have to use its ability yet. And then at any time later on, you can flip it to its spent side to gain one of, in this case, one of the bonuses. So taxing, I can gain some strife, but then I get gold based on my population. I can borrow, which gains me up to two loan cards, and I get money for each one. And these are, again, negative cards that to gum up your deck. Or I can hold a festival where I pay money to trash strife equal to... This is my... Whenever it has the box like this, that's like my culture upgrade track, not culture I've generated for the turn. So that's your capital, the only one you start with. And yeah, I might as well drop a uh, <laughs> an influence token on it because I don't have anything else to use it for right now. Now, remember, I need to get a lot of food and a lot of gold. Now, gold can be gained through like taxing and borrowing and that kind of stuff. You see that. But for food, I'm going to want to look at some of these territory abilities. So some things have resource deposits and has like a little uh, tower symbol. That means when I build a development there, I get the bonus. So if I build a development in this territory, I'll get two free food, which is great. Some other places have skill sharing and a boot. A boot ability means that if you end your turn there, remember a turn is just like one playing of cards, so I could get this over and over again. I would gain in this case one ingot. Uh, here, if I build there, mineral deposits, I'll get one gold. And then also I mentioned the trade agreement. So like if I can get all the way over to here and then spend six technology, I'll get one food for free each turn until the round ends. So that's something I would want to do like at the beginning of a round, maybe round two or round three, and just really get a ton of it. But then uh, those trade tokens stay there and kind of gum it up. And the only way to get them back to use them again is to develop that territory, which would take quite a bit of doing here. So I'm thinking I definitely want to build a development there. The other trade for food is all the way up here and there's an enemy on it, which means I can't use it yet. So I kind of want to go like right, I guess, with my initial developments. And the two cheapest ones, the ones that cost two gold, are both sculptures, interestingly enough. They would require three culture to build, which, uh, do I have that in my hand? Do, 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 culture, culture. There we go. The physician would give me two culture or four if I spent a gold or a water, the blue resource. But Mage Knight style, <laughs> you can use any card uh, face down, not sideways, as one of any resource. So I could like play that, for example, to build this sculpture with its three culture cost. And what's it do? It would upgrade our culture track once. Two upgrades of that would get me another trade good. The one Roman numeral here, by the way, means it's a level one development. You get to the level two developments in rounds three and four. It would get me two uh, glory points. I could use it to generate ingots, which is not really the most important thing to me. And then if I put an influence token on it, the lightning ball means when you place your influence. So if adjacent to a development with a the, that industry build cost, I would draw a card. And then this star or this resource are the two things I can spend it for. So if I put my influence on here, when I was standing on it, I could get an ingot or I could get ooh, two food or two water when you receive any ingot or metal. OK, so actually sculpture has a way, if I combine it with something else, to earn me food. So I do want to build this, I think. So let's go ahead and take one of them that cost me two gold. You don't refill yet. At the end of my turn, I'll slide them down and refill. I remember I had five gold because of my debt crisis. I also have two loans waiting in here. So this could go to my hand, or it could go straight to my discard pile if I don't think I'm going to build it for a while. Or it can go under my play area, kind of waiting. And again, if I don't build it this turn, I'm going to be having to pay one gold tax every time. But I think I'm going to build it this turn. Now, remember I said developments have to be built orthogonally out from your capital and then out from other developments. So I want to build here, I think. And usually you don't have to be there to do that. Like your pawn doesn't have to be there. But Livia, let's go through her abilities. She has the Waste Not ability. Once a turn, she can sell an advanced attribute from her hand or discard for three gold. Those are the ones you can buy from the top offer. Status and power. Once a turn, she can pay off a loan in her hand for two gold or a discard for three gold. Usually you have to pay three gold to pay off a loan and you can only do it in your hand. So she's way more flexible with loans. And then wife of the emperor, your leader must be present on a territory to build a development there. So she has to actually move to that uh, location next to her to be able to benefit. So let's, uh, let's use a card for moving. What am I thinking? I'm seeing that there's a watchtower that will come to the two gold spot pretty soon. And I do have a nice amount of military here. So let's... Uh, I also have Probatus to get me some resources. Then the copper. Well, let's use the copper mines to move. You put one of your movement tokens on it. I have two movement because that's where my industry is. Once I get one more industry, I'll have three. And then you can spend these at any point during your turn. So it's like I have to spend all of them before I do anything. So I can use one of the movement right now. Go over here to the territory. And now I've got the sculpture I want to build for three culture. 
So I'll play physician for two. I'm not uh, boosting it. And then, which, all right, I do love the idea of getting resources, but I'll play this one face down for a third culture, which is sufficient to build the sculpture. So I'm going to get a one culture upgrade, two glory points, and because I'm covering this uh, resource deposit to food. And note that the culture upgrade didn't get me anything. The next one I get will give me a trade good. All right, now I have these cards left, but I can choose to stop my turn at any time. And then these will just hang out for my next turn. And I want to use these for their attacking stuff. But I just love one movement left. And if I'm going to build that attack development, I probably want to build it down here and get a free gold and then be near this trade route. But before I leave, since I can only put down these influence tokens when I'm on a space, let's go ahead and influence the sculpture. I would get this bonus if it applied, if adjacent to a development with one of those, uh, the, what is that, industry? Yeah, with the industry symbol, then I would draw a card. Don't have that, but I can get rid of this to gain two food or two water when I receive any ore or metal, um, or I can just get an ore straight up. Hold on a second, let me look up what the actual resources are called. Okay, just looked it up. Sorry, it's tough when you only have a PDF rulebook for these uh, prototypes. So that's stone. The, low, the ingot gray thing, and the other one, the red one, where is it here? That's metal. But yeah, so I'm ending my turn. So whenever a turn ends, this marker advances, and if we get to the one, since we're in round one, the entire round will end. Anything that's been emptied gets pushed to the right, and you draw a new card. That was definitely from the wrong deck. These are the level two developments. These are the level one. Level twos are more powerful, but way more expensive, so in a short game, I don't know if I'll even get to them. All my played cards get discarded, and I get all my movement tokens back. And I draw back up to my current hand size based on military, which starts out at five. So I keep the two cards I had, and I draw three more. And oh, I didn't get any of my loans yet. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I had one movement left last turn. I meant to move down here because I want to build there. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to spend two of my three gold to buy this watchtower, which can produce metal. It's going to cost six military and get me two military upgrades, which, oh, will make my hand size six instead of five. That's cool. Now, this symbol with an influence token on it means while there is an influence on this, I would get this ongoing bonus. Enemies adjacent to the watchtower have attack values reduced to zero, which, oh, where I'm putting it is completely worthless. <laughs> Good job, Mike, <laughs> because there are no enemies adjacent to this watchtower. To show you a random enemy, they work very simply. This first value is their defense. You have to play at least that much military from a card to defeat them. And then next they have their attack. So this is kind of like summed up with their defense. And for each point you don't get to the summed value, you take one of those negative strife cards, your discard pile. So like if I attack this guy who has two defense and four attack, I would need two, three, four, five, or six. If I did two, I would take four strife. But if I did like five military total, I would beat his defense and have three extra for his attack and only take one strife card. And then that's how much glory you get and uh, victory points. And that's how much gold you get. So that's how uh, enemies work. But again, Watchtower, not going to do much here. I just need uh, six military. And I've got three from Show of Force, five with Onager. So I guess I got to discard something else. I already built a culture location. So I don't think I want to build another one. So let's go like that. Okay, three, four, five, six military. That's going to get me this watchtower on this territory. And because of the mineral deposits, I'll immediately gain one gold. I gain uh, three glory points and two military upgrades. And yes, that means that now at the end of every turn, I'm going to draw to six cards instead of five. Do I want to influence this? Yes, yes, I do. Because I want to do this. And you can just use influence whenever you want. You don't have to be on it to spend it. You just have to be on the location to place it. I'm going to go ahead and use the watchtower. In this case, for its production of one metal. And then I'm going to use the artistries. A uh, little star ability here. Gain two food or two water when you receive any stone or metal. So that gets me a metal and two more food. So I am ready whenever I want to to pay the first cost. You have to pay these left to right. So I can pay three food and I would do that. Then whenever I can play four food and do that, then I can play uh, six food. And in case you're wondering, you get all of your influence tokens back at the end of the round. So I have spent all my influence tokens for the moment, unless I can get some uh, technology upgrade to get me another one. But I will have them to influence the board and get bonuses in production later. What do I have left? I have a chariot that can give me technology for a trade route or increase movement. And I have this one that would make face down cards better, like the wild cards. Or I can get to industry to cycle cards. Ooh, and I can cycle another card for free. Interesting. So I could really change up the market. I kind of want to keep the chariot and the technology to maybe activate the food gaining ability of this territory. 
Although probably not this round because territory uh, trade routes are one use only. Because again, you put the thing on here. Once it's been exhausted or at the end of the round, it gets spent and flipped to that side. And you can't get it back and you can't use that trade route again until you build a development on it. And then you get the token back. So if I want to get this like gain of food per turn thing, I probably want to do that at the start of, I don't know, round two, which is a longer round, and then just really drag out the turns and then try to get five or six food for free from that. But either way, for now, I'll stop my turn with that. Actually, hold on. No, I won't. I'm going to use this senator and just cycle some things. So I get two industries, so I could cycle these for one, these for two, and that for three. And then I can also cycle a card for free. So I definitely don't want this sculpture. Um, I already built one, and I'm not really as into getting more culture upgrades. So cycling means it goes to the bottom of its deck. And then I have two more industry. Now, I'm not really thinking about advanced actions too much yet, but they are a little bit less expensive. So I could buy like this chariot racing for a single gold, and it would go to the top of my deck, uh, which is pretty good for generating resources. But right now, I don't have any good gold production is what worries me. All right, the only card I have left is technology. And I already built culture. So let's use one of my cycles for this, but I'll leave the farm and use the other one for, I don't know, oxen or legionnaires. Get out of there. Okay, then I'll end my turn. So this will send both of these all the way down there. And then, wow. Wow, what the heck? <laughs> that is three farms in a row. Now, this entire thing will get cycled at the end of the round. But yeah, that was definitely unusual. Okay, and I'm drawing to six this time because of my military upgrading. Do I still have neither of my loans? It's not really great, y'all. I wanted to pay them off or something. Now, every leader has a negative card in their deck. So here's hers, Conspiracies. You must keep this card in your hand unless you play it for its boosted effect. While it's in your hand, you must have the culture you generate for any effect. And then this, uh, if you boost it, this must be the first card you play this turn. Remember, boosting either costs this resource, water, or a gold. This must be the first card you play this turn. Ignore the basic action of this card. Cards played for movement this turn provide minus one movement. Now, this negative effect here applies even if I play it for movement. So it would affect itself and reduce movement by one. Uh, or if I play it for a face down thing. So I could use this as a one wild, but I would have to boost it and it would still mess up any movement I played that turn. Okay, I also got Mercuralia. She give me some industry. Or, ooh, let me boost up to two attribute cards for free this turn. Show of Force is mainly military. Merchant is cultural, though that would be halved right now. Or uh, more industry. Engineer is a nice one. When building a development, spend one of any resource. These are resources. To gain plus two of the needed attributes. So it's kind of like a better wild. And then Chariot we already knew about. So I do have a decent, between Merchant and Mercuralia and potentially Engineer, I have a decent uh, industry option here. So I could build this Insula. That would get me a technology upgrade, which would get me one closer to having another influence token. It would get me population, which would make the uh, the borrow action better. Although not at first, because her population only goes up to one the first time, so stays at one. All right, running water. So when I put an influence token on this, I'd have to pay one stone to gain three water. I don't have any way to get stone. Although powers will indicate whether they're required or not. And this one is not required. Others will be like, you must uh, do blank whenever you activate this. So this is an optional thing. And then while a token was on here, once a turn, I could ready uh, influence token in adjacent development. Wow, so I get double use out of it. That's crazy good. And I can spend this to trash a strife for free. It's pretty good. Now, what's my other cheap one? The one that I have a billion of? Farm. Oh, it gets me food production. I mean, that seems like the one I want, right? Ooh, and when I activate it, when I put an influence token on it, I can spend two industry to gain another food and then sell crops. Gain gold equal the number of farms adjacent to this one with ready influence. Wait, oh, so getting multiple farms is actually good. Okay, so that's six uh, technology, which gosh, I only have show of force can get it for me if I boosted it. And I do have one iron to boost it, so that'd be three. Oh, no, that's not technology. That's industry. Yeah, like all these are industry. I have chariot only for technology at the moment. But I could play all these as face down cards and it would still work. And just to remind you, the cheapest advanced card, which I think is the only one I would want to buy, does not get me any technology. I only have five more cards to go through, and I know two of them are loans. So, hmm. Oh, that's right. My engineer could get me two of anything. So if I did the chariot boosted, spending one of my food... And the engineer, I would have the six I need. Uh, all right, I guess I want to do that. I don't freaking know. I'm, I'm going to try to build a farm. I'm going to try to build a farm. So I got to move. I'm going to go here and then build out to this mineral deposit for another gold. Oh, and then that's a food every turn. I just stand there. It's pretty dang good. All right, so I could use conspiracies for its dumb thing. But now I'm not really worried about that card. Um, I want to keep 
Which ones gave me actual technology? Oh, Engineer and Chariot are going to help me build the farms I want. So the rest of these I don't really care about. Let's uh, go ahead and discard or spend Show of Force to get me two movement. I'll go here first. I'm going to spend my final two gold to buy a farm. And I need a six technology. So that's two or four if I spend a food or a gold. I'll spend a food to boost it. And it's kind of against uh, because it's green against what I'm trying to do, get more food, but that's okay. So that's four, and then I can spend any resource. I guess I'll spend my one metal to make uh, to give me plus two of any attribute I need. So that's six total, which is enough for the farm. That gives me one glory point and a technology upgrade. One more technology upgrade from, for example, a farm would get me another influence token. That'd be nice. But sadly, I don't have any more influence to put on this right now, so I can't produce a food or uh, gain money equal to the number of farms adjacent to this one. So that's too bad. Okay, and then I have one movement left. Let's go here. I'm going to try to build another farm before the round ends. We'll see if that happens. And I guess I'll stop there until the turn end. So I have another farm in the cheapest spot, although I need to like tax my people or something to get enough gold. Um, so I have this turn and potentially next turn before the round ends automatically. All right, let's see what I drew. Okay, there's my loan. Did I get anything? Okay, here we go. This, this is kind of like the, oh, what's it called? A Mage Knight, the card where you have to discard another card. Uh, is it like improv, improvise, I think? Uh, so this one, I can discard a red attribute card to get four military or any non-card to get three technology or uh, industry. Okay. And here's the loans. They uh, just gum up my hand and they get you two when you take them generally. I can pay three to return it. Although with Livia's ability, I could return it for two gold and it's minus three glory points for scoring. So even though my combined glory cost to win is 20, it could actually need to be 23 or 26 or 29. Now, by the way, you can freely discard Lone and Strife cards from your hand, but you can't use them for like wilds for one resource. They just kind of gum things up and <laughs> waste your draw at potential. And hey, after hearing how terrible they are, let's get some more. I'm going to go ahead and activate my capital ability to borrow. Gain up to two loans, gain two gold for each. I'll just get one for now. I'm kind of afraid to take... Nah, whatever. I'll get two. I will definitely need more gold later. Let's get my discard pile to be drawn later, and I get four gold. Yay. And then I'm going to spend two of that gold to get another farm. And uh, I want to build it here. So I need six technology, which is only the discipline plus some wilds. Well, let's discard the loan <laughs> to uh, not have that messing things up. Uh, but I got two cards left in my deck. You know, let's actually say I didn't buy the farm yet <laughs> because otherwise I'll have to pay a tax for it. And I'll just end the turn. So I have this final turn. But let's me draw my last cards. Okay, there's another loan. Get out of here. Ah, there we go. Okay, I knew I had another tech producer. So that can get me to five. So I'll discard any card. We'll just discard, I don't know, this one to make this a three. And that's five. And then I'll play the physician face down. So that's six. And then I'll spend the two gold, play the farm down. Gets me another tech upgrade, another glory point, and a gold from the mineral deposit. So that gets me to three gold. And because I got another tech upgrade, I get a fourth influence, which I can use immediately. Yay. So I'll put it on the farm. And when I put it on the farm, seasonal rains, I can spend two industry to gain a food. Sure, let's uh, use the merchant to produce that. So it gets me to four food and then I can spend it. I can't do sell crops because there isn't another farm adjacent with a ready uh, influence token, but I can use it to produce a crop, which gets me to five food. And you can only pay off one of these things. And again, you have to go from left to right per turn, but I could like wait until basically the end of the game and then one turn, two turns, three turns. So there's no need to spend the food yet. Okay, in the final turn, I only have my negative conspiracy card left, so I don't think we're going to do anything with that. And that'll be the end of the round. So I shuffle up my whole deck and I draw a new hand of cards. All my four, in this case, influence come back and I have to move back onto places to put them out there. The round advances to two. I only have a two and three. Remember, in a short game, the turn tracker goes back and everything gets cycled. Now, in round two, I still have to uh, only fill from the level one developments. But in round three, and if I was playing a long game four, you can choose as you like between level one and level two. So going into round two, what do I need? Um, I'm doing decently on the food thing. Like I have two places that can reduce food now. I have some powers that can get me more food. So I'm not too worried about the market. So really it's all about getting more glory points, which means building more developments or killing some enemies because I'm only at seven out of 20 plus a bunch of loans, <laughs> lowering that score even more. And then just getting gold income, and gold is always tough to get, as you've seen. Oh, no, this is a great first uh, hand. <laughs> Look at all these loads. 
I think I'll just discard them all. I mean, I could be paying them off with Livia's power, but I, I need the gold right now. So I can't actually do anything this turn. Maybe it's a little bit silly, but I'm thinking maybe I'll go down to this skill sharing place and just get a free uh, food. It's when you end your turn there, when you uh, go to the cleanup phase. I could just like stay there for a couple turns and get some free food, maybe. Because I don't want to activate my farm yet, because I don't have any clean way except for the upgraded show of force ability, to get to industry and gain one food, which I would like to do when I activate it. So sure, what the hey, I'll discard physician to get two movement points and just go here. And then I'm going to end my turn super early so I can get hopefully a real hand of cards. And I'll get one food for doing that. All right, that takes me to the first turn. Remember, I'm going to get one more turn this time because of the uh, round two. What have we got this time? Oh my gosh, loan. Great. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of loans in my deck, don't I? And then I've got mostly attacky stuff. The cheapest uh, development is the Watchtower again. That's the same one I had before. Two more military upgrades would get me an even bigger hand size. I'm not sure that matters. Three glory points is pretty darn good for a single development. That's about the highest you'll get. I don't really care about the weakening enemies part. Um, oh, and trade. I didn't even notice on the other one. I could pay resources I don't get to get gold. Darn it. Or with all that military, it seems like it would be dumb not to build the watchtower. So I'll go ahead and spend two gold <laughs> of my just huge gold coffers to get the watchtower. And I guess I'll build it on the place that I'm getting my free food. Uh, just to remind you, you don't have to build with any other leader uh, where you are. I could build here or here or here or here or here or here. But uh, because I'm playing as Livia, I have to build where I am. So that's the only reason I have that requirement. Although, hey, you know what, what if, I don't know, what if I move? Uh, I'll uh, discard chariots to move here for one of my movement. Then I'll build the watchtower. So if I do discipline and discard another red card, I get show of force and then play sh uh, another show of force. If that's just a better show of force, uh, then I get six military that I need. So I get the watchtower here. I get two more military upgrade, which again is going to make my hand size seven. I get three more glory points. That's the important part. And then do I want to put an influence token here to produce metal? Um, I don't think so. Oh, gosh, never mind. It's pay one metal and one water to get a gold. I don't think that's happening. And then I do have one movement left, so let's go right back here and get another free food. And I really don't think the food thing, the building the market, is going to be the problem. I'm not sure how to deal with the debt crisis <laughs> or to get enough glory points. But we'll end the turn there, I think. And now, gosh, I have a lot of cards. <laughs> All right, so I'm really just trying to figure out how the heck do I get gold production going. If I move on to both my farms... I could use the sell crops to get gold from one of them and then get like food from the other one. I could, of course, go back to the capital and mess myself up to get more gold. I do have this advanced card, the Copper Mines. This is her special one that lets me get one gold for each development my leader moves into that produces metal. And I actually have two watchtowers that produce metal. So if I used a bunch of cards just to move through there, that'd be great. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any stone to pay to use the better version of this which means I'd have to pay one gold to use the bottom effect to then be able to get two gold if I use a ton of cards to move. It's not great. It's not great. Now, this new cheap one is Bridge. It would uh, generate two metal. Although, look, here's a must. If I put a influence on this, I would have to pay a stone, which I don't have, so I couldn't even use its effect. <laughs> um, but it would get me an industry upgrade, which ooh, increases my movement, so I'd be able to move three for each card instead of two. Do I have uh, five industry? No, the copper mines would get me that all by itself, but I don't have two gold. I only have one gold. What if I spend the order to move to then go farm as I'm moving through it? I'm going to activate it and spend. Oh, it's the same stupid thing. Well, I'll go ahead and spend Mercalia to get two of those to get a food. So I'm at eight food. And then I have another movement. I'm going to move here. This time I'm not going to spend the stuff to get an extra food. And then I'll activate one of the farms to gain gold equal to the number of farms adjacent with a ready influence. That's going to get me one gold that gets me to the two I wanted. And I'm going to spend another physician to move over here. But I'm not going to... I don't think I'm going to do anything with it or activate the watchtower. Well, I have two influence left. And yeah, I can't even activate the bridge. So sure, I'll go ahead and activate the watchtower as I walk through. And I guess I'll stop there for this turn. And next turn, maybe try to like build the bridge and also move through some places and get some gold. Oh wait, but I won't have enough gold to both build the bridge and get the stone I need. So what if, <laughs> instead of moving two to there right now, what if I move through the capital and the sculpture and put both of those down and I don't gain an inspiration? Because then I can use this to get the stone. That'll let me activate copper mines next turn. And I can tax or borrow again if I need to. Now, taxing one gave me strife and only one gold because I only have one population. And then ending my turn here lets me trash a strife, but it has to be in my hand. And it's going to be my discard pile, so the timing won't work out there. 
Okay, I'll go and use my Onager to move one more turn. Oh, no, I don't want to move yet. I don't want to move yet, because if I use Copper Mines, I want to, like, get the gold from moving through the Watchtower. Okay, so I'm not going to move yet. I'll just stop there with four cards left in my hand. And actually, drawing three more, I'm almost uh, out of card. Oh, my freaking conspiracies. No, that's okay. That's okay. It doesn't lower my movement unless I use it for its bottom effect. Okay, I do technically have, like, three turns left. I don't think I'm going to get them. So uh, let's pay two gold to get the bridge ready to build. It's going to cost five of the what's call it. And then I'm going to play, where'd you go, dude? Uh, <laughs> Copper Mines to uh, get five. I'm going to spend my one stone that matches the gray icon to get five industry. And I'll get one gold for each development. I move on to this turn that produces metal. Okay, and then I'll move with an Onager to here and get a gold since that produces men metal. Now, I don't think you can move back and forth onto the same one. And I still have one more move. So now I'll go here. And I'll use the five that I already generated to build the bridge. So that'll get me three glory points immediately and an upgrade that'll now let me move three for each card. So I'm at 13 glory out of 20, by the way. But again, I've got tons of loans. Okay, then I'm going to use, I don't know, merchant to move three. And I can go one, two. That's two more gold. Heck yes. And I have a third move. Where do I want to go? I do need to build more stuff. So I guess on the resource deposit over here is good. And let's stop my turn there, because I do think I'll be able to do one more thing with that in a second. Because we're now on the final turn this wise. I would actually have one more turn, but I have drawn out my entire deck now. Which means this is the final turn, once you don't have any cards left in your draw pile. So I can just play these, and then I'm done. But I saw that this came out, the Aqueduct, and I think I have enough to build it. And that'll get me three more glory points, so let's do it. So it will cost me two of the three gold I just got. I need to get gold for the debt crisis. But I get this, and I need six technology to build it. And I do have a ton of food, so I'll spend one food to play the Onager with its four technology. And then I can spend, like, any mix of these. Um, I wish I could use Probatus to discard Conspiracies, but I don't think I'm allowed to. Well, actually, you know what? I will do that. I'm going to actually play Engineers, spend one of any resource. I'll spend food again, because I have a lot of it, to gain two more of the needed attribute. So that's four with the boosted Onager and two with the Engineer. That's six to build the aqueduct, which gets me a technology upgrade, which isn't quite enough for another uh, influence token. And three points, that's what I really care about. And I get two water. I don't have any influence left, so none of the rest of that matters. And then I am going to, as my last action, play Probatus, discard a card to gain two resources of that card's color. I'll discard Senator to get me two stone. That'll be good for, like, boosting gray cards later. And that'll be pretty much it, although let me activate my influence tokens, because I can get one more food from the farm. And then I really don't want to borrow more. Should I do any of these? If I don't borrow, I could get a Strife to gain a single gold because I only have one population. But the Strife I can get rid of with actual resources, culture, and I haven't really been doing much with culture. So yeah, you know what? I will go in and tax and get one gold and get a Strife to shuffle in with all my uh, loans later. And that's it. We're going into the final round. Remember, I have 16 glory points out of 20, although not really. <laughs> and I could uh, deal from the level two developments, but they cost a lot. Although they are worth a lot more... Uh, glory points, but I haven't bought any advanced actions. God, I'm not playing well. Like I said, I'm not good at this game, but at least you can see how it works. Here's my first hand. Let's see what we got. We got my Copper Mines card to get some gold, and I am in a pretty nice position to move through all those places. So I definitely want to do that. The big thing is resources. I've got seven food. That's enough to build the market partially, but I need eight gold to solve the debt crisis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I need to somehow get to 20 points, which would require me to build at least a couple more developments and then also like get rid of all my loans. I don't know how this is going to happen. Well, the quick answer is it probably isn't because I'm playing on normal difficulty. And for me and my skill level, normal difficulty, it might as well be incredibly difficult difficulty. <laughs> but I do have two water, two stone, so I can boost blue and gray cards kind of freely. Well, hey, to start off, I didn't really read my Aqueducts ability, but look, I can put a token there and then I can spend two tech to change a food into a gold. Great, it's the two things I need. So it's not really that good, <laughs> but it's something. Wait, do I not have any tech? Come on, man. Okay, maybe, well, I guess I can just leave it there for now. Now I should do a trade agreement because I haven't done one yet. So let's move. And what do I need? I need, do I need tech for the friggin' trade agreement too? Oh wait, my discipline can get me tech. Okay, good, good. So let's see then. Definitely need the copper mines. So I probably don't need Mercury. Ooh, that boosts up to two attribute cards for free this turn. Hmm. Well, I'm already going to use the stone. Okay, so I'll discard that to move up to three. So my first move will be here. I'm going to spend three tech to gain the quick version. Each trader has a quick version and a longer term version. 
So to get that, I'm going to play Discipline and discard a non-red card for three tech, which will be the card. Oh, I guess I should discard my loan. I'm not going to be able to pay that right now. Uh, what will I discard? I need to keep Copper Mine. So I don't, probably don't need Merchant, do I? Okay, I'll discard Merchant. So that gets me three. I go on here. I gain two food now and immediately end this agreement, which means it goes here. And I can't put another one there or do anything. But if I build there, I get the agreement back. But that got me two food. And I think I'll stop there for this turn because I don't really have anything else I want to do yet. Let's see what I got this time. More loans. Great. <sighs> Probably should pay some of these off, right? <laughs> but I don't have any way to get money. Ooh, barracks. I have a lot of military cards in my hand. And it's worth four glory points. And it's another metal one I could move through. Okay, so let's buy that for two gold. That's all my gold. I need to get to seven attack. So show of force is three. And Probatus is four. Oh, if I boost it, which is the only color I can't boost right now. Great. But here, I could do engineer. Why don't I spend a blue water? So that's five. And then I don't know, I'll play Probatus face down. That's six. And then maybe uh, Orator. That's seven. I don't know what I'm doing. But that'll be the barracks here, which gets me my trade token back. And I get four glory points and two uh, metal heads. Let me show you why that matters. Because now my hand size is eight. But ooh, I went beyond the track for my second upgrade, which gets me a glory point instead. So it was actually a five glory point build. So I'm past 20. But again, I have so many loans <laughs> that I'm not really at the victory point goal. That's okay. That's okay. All right. And I'll discard the loan. I don't have any money. I'm going to do my big copper mine move next turn. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. All right. So let's, uh, where is that? Copper mine. I'm going to spend one stone to use the advanced version. So for every development I move into that produces metal, I get a gold. And again, I don't think I can just move back and forth. But look, if I go one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five, six, and I can get a food, that would be two cards worth. Um, let's see. I don't really know. I guess I have a lot of technology. Oh, it's actually the aqueduct that I can build uses technology. So let's not get rid of those. So yeah, let's use the senator for one of those moves and the, I don't know, the show of force for the other one. So that'll give me one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm getting four gold. Heck yeah. And I went through some places, right? So I went through all of these. What do I actually want? I do have water. So if I did like the watchtower and the other watchtower, I could produce a metal and then exchange the metal in the water for a gold. But I can also do my farms, right? Yeah, it seems like the farms are a better option. So let's not do that, I guess. Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess I'm not uh, activating anything. All right, I'll stop my turn there. And I get a food, which gets me to 10. Okay, I get to better spend some, right? Uh, let's go ahead and spend seven to do the first two. And now I'm three away from the last one. Oh my god, I only have one card left in my deck? What the heck? I should have bought some advanced cards. Ugh, I'm so dead, y'all. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to do this. I need eight, uh, four more gold. Four more freaking gold. And three more food. And I don't have enough points. Ah, You know what? Let's just stop there. Because <laughs> the video is going a little bit long and I got to go run and be with my family. So, uh, yes. Uh, but you can see that I definitely was not going to win on normal difficulty. If I was playing on an easier difficulty, I would have started with more gold, which would have certainly helped a lot. And I would have had to do fewer of these cards. So you can definitely make the game easier. Although, I'll be honest, I've had a hard time winning even at the easiest difficulty settings. But it's probably because, uh, hey, Mike, remember all these awesome advanced actions you can buy? I just never feel like I have the gold to spare for them, but they clearly make your actions way better. And they're also like crazy combos. Like, look, this banking card can let you get gold consistently. So, yes, I was not playing well, but that's how the game works. Uh, let's talk about it. So first of all, variety. This is the kind of game where there is like only one scenario. So you want some variety in it. And I think for a little tiny solo game, this is awesome for variety. The map's going to be different every game. The enemies. Oh, yeah. Remember them? Remember the guys that you never fought? Oh, I should have remembered. Uh, <laughs> explored these when I got adjacent to them. Uh, yeah, so like the enemies will change, the locations will change, where the trade routes and the bonuses are. Your character changes things greatly because a lot of them actually have, uh, you know, like my person had a limit. They all have a limit on one card in their deck and then also a, like a negative ability on their board. So it's not just bonuses. So the game really feels different when you play each one. And then I think you saw this in the play, the edicts, like the things you have to complete, 
a crazy difference. So the game really changes like in terms of what you're trying to go for based on which of these cards you pick and randomly draw. And then of course the developments are going to be randomly coming out. The, uh, the advanced actions that I never bought <laughs> are going to be, are going to be uh, randomly coming out. So I think the replay in this game is fantastic. I think there is tons of variety in how it's going to play, even though it's always the same five by five map, the same placement of enemies, the same like general scenario. Now for the actual card play and upgrading, I like how the upgrading works with the developments. I think all these are pretty useful, even though I was maybe dumb and didn't get the best ones. You know, getting more of the uh, influence tokens, getting more trade goods if you use them more than I do, having bigger hands, being able to move farther. And then if you get higher population, that uh, one option at your home place to get one uh, strife for gold becomes amazing. So I think this is neat. I like uh, this is kind of again, this is a game very heavily influenced by Mage Knight. This is like the mana crystals in Mage Knight, but it's really nice and clean having these tracks and then seeing which card can boost them and gold being the wild and the card play. They're going for Mage Knight. They're going for complex and they got it. I mean, it's it's really crazy, but like the the resources and, you know, being able to play cards face down for a wild of anything, being able to boost cards and being able to boost a lot of them with gold or boost them with the specific uh, color resource. It means that you get these really meaty, really tactically engaging turns. Now, it also has the drawbacks of games like Mage Knight in that stuff can get pretty complex. And even some of your starting cards are kind of complex. Like, normally you don't get that many complex cards, but a few of them for your specific leader are going to be kind of more, uh, have more going on. So it can be a brain burner to think about what you want to do. And the game is very tight. I would say if I'm comparing it directly to Mage Knight, even though this is like more of a Euro civilization game and Mage Knight is an adventure game, Mage Knight in the early game feels like you can get a lot done. Like it's not that hard to kill like goblins in battle and that kind of stuff. This game feels tight right from the outset. Gold is just really hard to get a good engine going, at least for me. There are certainly ways to do it, and I'm just not good enough at doing it. <laughs> but gold is such an important resource. You can't buy advanced actions. You can't get developments without it. And if you don't get your gold game going pretty early, the game can feel like you are a little trapped and anemic and weak sometimes. Again, that's just me not playing the game very well. But I think that is a definite uh, feeling the game gives. It is a desperate game. It is a super challenging game, but also incredibly rewarding because, again, you can really dig into the strategy and choices, get some awesome combos going if you're better at it than me. <laughs> I'm just not as smart as uh, Joe Clipful, the designer, <laughs> I guess. So, yeah, this game is not going to be for everyone. It's going to burn some people's brains too much. It might be too much tactical choice for some people, too much of a challenge. But if you don't care about that stuff, or if you really like, you know, playing Mage Knight against level 15 or level 20 cities or whatever, this game is awesome. You're going to love this game. There is so much. I cannot believe how much like value and stuff is going on in here. Like I didn't see yet if this is going to be the same size packaging and uh, the same cost as the other uh, solo series games from uh, Gabe Barrett. But if it is, this one is definitely the densest. Like, there's just so much stuff for, like, a little cheap, quick, well, not really quick. <laughs> this is, you know, it's a small, less expensive game. This is a deceptively complicated game. But this, there's so much going in here for your money. So, yeah, I think this is a big recommend for me. Maybe my favorite mechanically of the games in that solo series so far, besides uh, the Dyson Crusoe one. I still love that one, and that's a much simpler, more straightforward game. But both of them are really tactically interesting packages at a small price point. So there you go. That is Rome, Fate of an Empire. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next stop.